Hello there, kitties. I'm Curry, the vacuum tube witch. And today, I'd like to show you the Tascam Porta Studio 414, a pretty modern model of a four track cassette recorder, the legendary product line from Tascam. I also have an older model, something like 214, let me check that. One moment, please. Two forty four. And I will still have to get around to repairing that one. And this one is already repaired. There were some uh, cracking issues uh, with potentiometers. So let's get to the bench and see what's inside. Because this is a pretty elegant construction and it, uh, it might be worthwhile uh, to, to see how it looks inside. So the Tescam is on the bench. And let's start by taking out the cassette and unscrewing the the screw, the, the single screw available from uh, from the top. All the remaining screws are uh, on the bottom. And there is quite a lot of them. Blind. There's one. The serial number is over 7 millions, so they probably made a lot of these. Seems to be a popular model. This is blind, and this... Both of those holes are blind. Oh, let's catch the screws. Uh, if they fall out, uh, they can't escape. And it's time to take it, take the enclosure apart. One more screw. The speed adjustment knob. And I will have to look why is this not coming apart like like it did? Oh no this is uh, this is not the explanation because the printed circuit board for the top part is attached to the enclosure but it now comes it now comes apart there are a few cable bundles 
connecting both both parts of the enclosure. Then the top part uh, has a nice uh, shielding made of uh, aluminum foil placed between um, two sheets of uh, plastic foil for insulation. A pretty elegant design. And then bottom part is the printed circuit board. There is a uh, quality control uh, stamp uh, on the board. It's uh, it's clearly Chinese or, or or Taiwanese, made in Taiwan. No wonder. And it's even mirrored. <laughs> Can I get a better view on that? <laughs> it's mirrored, but this one is okay. This one is still mirrored. <laughs> curious. Quite curious. The tape mechanism has uh, the erase and uh, playback record uh, head. And of course, there's a pin roller and the capstan. I I cleaned this uh, mechanism and uh, I also I also uh, repaired uh, the tape counter. There's a lot of uh, electrolytic caps on the board. Many of them are probably in the signal path. That's uh, this is not uh, the optimal way to um, to design uh, analog electronics. But if you need a lot of uh, a lot of capacitance, you can go with uh, electrolytics. I'd still rather go with uh, tantalum caps. This is the power section. This is the speed adjustment pot for adjusting the speed on this motor in a, in a certain range. And uh, when I was testing this um, tape recorder, it went a lot faster than uh, your typical uh, stereo uh, cassette recorders go. Because um, typical uh, hi-fi um, cassette recorders, uh, from what I remember, they go at uh, 4.75 uh, centimeters per second. While uh, this, uh, this would go uh, something like uh, 9.5, I guess. This, that is just a uh, guesstimate, uh, because I uh, haven't done any measurements. I don't have a uh, tachometer to, to check the rotational speed of the, of, uh, of the pin drawer or the linear speed of the, of the tape. So let's take a look at the mixer board. What will we find on it? Lots and lots and lots of traces. I don't exactly want to take this board uh, out of the enclosure because uh, there's a lot of uh, controls, but further 
for the sake of completeness to, to show you how this device is built I will I will so I will carry on with disassembling the Tascam Fortunately all the controls uh, have the D-style uh, axle So there is no ambiguity when um, putting the, the knob um, back on the potentiometer You can only do it in a single position which makes uh, reassembly a lot easier than if you have uh, the, the knurled uh, if you have the, the knurled uh, axle or a, or a round axle mm, do I have one more screw somewhere here? I do. Oh yes, the faders. And now And now I will take the PCB out of the enclosure Also uh, taking the dust cover out of, uh, out of the enclosure and uh, this is uh, cardboard with conductive paint also for shielding though it will not be as uh, effective as uh, as the real deal metal foil let me see if uh, if i want to measure the Resistance. Hmm, it's better than expected. Even though it's paper, it measures uh, zero ohms uh, across. Uh, let's uh, let's get this out. Uh, It measures perfect zero ohms uh, across the the plate, even though this is just uh, metal covered paper. So we've got a lot of uh, function switches for routing the input signals and uh, and routing the uh, post fader signals. We've got uh, LEDs uh, for controlling the, for measuring the the level on each one of those channels. We've got uh, operational amplifiers in um, single inline uh, packages. We don't even have a single. Uh, integrated circuit in the dual inline package uh, nor do we have uh, any surface mount parts all is uh, through hole technology none of that SMD rubbish we've got a lot of uh, a lot of switches and uh, push buttons and potentiometers 
Some of them were unfortunately cracking, but given the potentiometer's construction, it would be pretty difficult and risky to take them apart for cleaning and there is no hole where you could uh, squirt uh, some uh, potentiometer cleaning agent. So uh, most of what I did on, uh, on the board would be squirting some uh, pot cleaning agent uh, into the faders leaving the, the rotary pots uh, as they were and also squirting some uh, contact cleaner into, into the jacks and uh, cleaning them uh, with uh, a q-tip. So let's put it back together like it should be. First, uh, first the shield, then the dust cover. By the way, those uh, short potentiometers they are the gain. Uh, they are the gain parts. Uh, like if you want to have a uh, microphone input on the channel, you you go all the way up if you want the line input you go all the way down it's uh, it's typical uh, gain adjustment uh, probably in the feedback loop of the operational amplifier so this goes back Starting with uh, with the holes. I'm gonna make sure that it all matches correctly. Mismatch detected on uh, on this on this little post. Mm, it may be better if I if I take it apart again <coughs> and start by uh, putting the dust cover on the on the enclosure rather than uh, rather than on the PCB. That's more like it. And then the shield. Then the printed circuit board. Putting the jacks uh, into the holes. It fits. Now I need to identify the holes that don't take part in uh, attaching this screen. And 
and also have to remember about uh, the screws going all the way through the enclosure. So this goes all the way, I, I don't have to do it now. This goes all the way. So does this and this and this and this. So whenever we can see a, a wide uh, cutout, it's used for the enclosure. The the hole in the in the screen uh, is for attaching the screen. All the remaining holes on the board like this are for attaching the board to the enclosure. Gotta be careful when uh, reattaching those screws. Gotta go back. Uh, go back a uh, slight bit and uh, and then uh, go forward. So uh, this will be used for for attaching the shield. This uh, this will also be used for for the shield. This will be used for attaching the board. And uh, the screws that I need to attach before putting the, the shield uh, on the board are marked uh, on the PCB, on the, on the silk screen layer. So it's just a matter of taking a closer look at the board. And uh, I should now only have the, the marked screws. By now, I will have the the shield attached.
attaching the cable tie. Should I also have a screw here? That's one. This goes through the enclosure. So let's put it back together. Fortunately, all the connectors are, are different, so there's no chance of uh, jumbling them. Also, no chance of inserting the connector the, the wrong way. So it is time to put it back together. The screws on the bottom side uh, are of the same length. Makes reassembly pretty easy. And the last screw and all the controls.
starting by f with feathers, you can't jumble them. They are all of the same color. Besides uh, the, the master fader that is red. All the rest is orange. Unfortunately, there were a few missing knobs uh, in, uh, in the device uh, as I got it. And then the green ones uh, I've got uh, most of them uh, most of them are green. got eight of them and let's uh, let's use them for equalization I've got seven blue knobs. Let's use them for effects. Then the mixer has uh, auxiliary buses for effect sand. The white ones uh, for panning. And the orange ones for for the other channels. So, uh, two knobs are missing. And that would be pretty much it for the Task Importer Studio. There's one more thing I would like you to notice. If you take a closer look at the DC barrel jack, it's uh, 12 volts DC but the outer connector is positive and the inner connector is negative. Unlike you see on uh, any typical uh, power supplies. Fortunately, I have checked uh, the circuit and uh, there is a protection uh, diode uh, in line with uh, the positive uh, rails on the... On the power supply uh, jack. So uh, if you connect the power in reverse uh, it won't damage the, the device but, uh, but it will just not work. So um, the, the input connection is more like the effect pedals uh, with, uh, with center negative. That's, uh, that's a thing worth noting. And that would be it. The Porta Studio is today going back to the customer I was uh, repairing it for. I hope he, he will be satisfied with my services. Because I love uh, tinkering with vintage audio equipment. And... See you in the next one. 
Maybe working on a project. Maybe doing a teardown. We will see. And one more thing. Uh, I was thinking about doing a live stream uh, on uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday uh, midnight uh, after Big Clive uh, ends his stream. We'll see. Bye.